Well, it is very clear that spring is here. Have you noticed the rain again? The lawns are rivaling the color of green in Ireland. They're so lush this year. Until spring is here. I know that spring is here because the pollens are out and I'm on the verge of laryngitis again. You can hear the little gravel in my voice, which shows that obviously you have been praying, but your timing is off because it's really going to hit tomorrow or Tuesday when I have no voice at all. Otherwise, you would have gotten out of, you know, a homily free today. And, uh, Another sign that it's spring is that it's confirmation time. Celebrated the sacrament of confirmation Monday and Tuesday here at St. Greg's. Bishop Malone was here. Definitely confirmation is a uh, sign of spring. And um, I'd like to think for a moment about confirmation. Shared some thoughts in the, the bulletin this week on it, but I'm going to suppose, I won't ask for a show of hands, I'm going to suppose for all of us who are adults, the majority, hopefully all of us are already confirmed. And I know here in church I can see a couple of our newly confirmed who were just confirmed this past Monday and Tuesday. And uh, I can also see that we have some who are on the verge of it in the next year or two. So we span. But um, for those of us who are already confirmed, for those who are in preparation for it, a, a simple question or two to ask, what did confirmation mean for you? For those of us who are confirmed, you know, what did that really mean for you? Why were you confirmed? And for those who are in that preparation process, looking in the next year or two to hopefully be confirmed, why? Why do you want to be confirmed? It's a very important question to ask and reflect on. And Bishop Malone gave a beautiful homily. It was the same homily Monday and Tuesday. I'm not picking on the bishop for repeating the homily. I wanted to make sure, you know, the same message got to the whole group here at St. Greg's, divided into two different nights. And Bishop Malone began with a question, a question I pondered in the bulletin this week in my article. And same question I'm going to pose to you right now. Bishop posed the following question. He said, is confirmation the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? It's a very good question. Is confirmation the beginning of the end or is it the end of the beginning? It's a great question. For some, confirmation is the beginning of the end. I've heard year after year, thank goodness I no longer have to go to family faith and learn any more about the church. Beginning of the end. <laughs> For some, I've heard them say, well, now I don't have to go to Mass anymore, you know, Bishop even commented on that in his homily. He said, for some who get confirmed, the next time we see them is maybe when they're getting married and then the time after that when they're the guest of honor at the funeral. It's the next time we see them at Mass, unfortunately. Beginning of the end, that's the way we think. And even year after year here at St. Greg's, I'll, I'll meet parents who will Tell their teenagers, just get confirmed, and after you're confirmed, decide if you want to be a Catholic and go to church or not. It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> it's not uh, the right way to approach the sacrament at all. Is the sacrament the beginning of the end or, or the end of the beginning? And it's really the, the end of the beginning, meaning it's a sacrament of initiation. It's the last of the sacraments of initiation, baptism, Eucharist, confirmation where we receive in confirmation the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And thankfully, I see so many of our young people every year who see, understand that confirmation is the end of the beginning and the opening of a new chapter of their life of faith 
as they accept that fullness of the Holy Spirit. I am so privileged every year to lead the confirmation retreats, and I love them because I enjoy spending time with our teenagers, and so many of them will comment of what they receive spiritually from the retreat. They will comment during the retreat that they're realizing how much they don't know, which is the first sign of wisdom and uh, ongoing catechesis that's needed. Every year we have here at St. Greg's a, a few who step up to the plate immediately to, to sign up for ministries to serve. One young man in church right now in the balcony, I won't point him out to you, you know, there's only a handful, he's waving. And uh, confirmation night right in the aisle here, maybe five rows from the front that he's signing up to be a Eucharistic minister. Now you're stuck, you're holding to it. And you know, it was wonderful to see that immediately, every year, some of our teenagers step up to the plate to serve Eucharistic minister, lecture, two of our ushers at this mass started ushering right after their confirmation. It's wonderful. It's the end of the beginning and, and a new beginning of living the life of faith. Story that maybe I shared with you in the past, I don't recall, but it's a story that goes to the waiting room of my doctor's office, and it's not any slam for doctor's offices and waiting rooms. My doctor actually runs very much on time. But I'm one of those guys who, I love waiting rooms of the doctor's office. I absolutely do. I actually go extra early, because I, I pack my briefcase, and I find a corner of the waiting room, and I set up shop. I get more work done there in a half hour or hour than an entire week in the office here. And uh, one particular time when I was in the waiting room, I my corner there, briefcase open, one chair kind of my desk, I'm working, and as I'm working, I, I heard the door open, and so I looked up and I saw a young man walk in, probably college age, and noticed he walked up to the, you know, uh, sign-in window, and. I went back to work, and a few minutes passed, and, and uh, all of a sudden, I, I, I hear and see someone sit down right next to me. There's an entire waiting room with empty chairs. I'm in the furthest corner away. Why did you come and sit right next to me? You know, I'm thinking, and, and as soon as I was thinking that, he, he leaned over to me, and he said, so when were you saved? I had my collar on, and I said, well, I suppose that was when I was baptized. And he said, no, I mean, when did you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And I said, well, I, I suppose that was when I got confirmed and accepted the responsibility of faith on my own and received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And as soon as I said that, he, he looked kind of sad, and he looked at me, and he said, oh, you must be a Catholic. I said, yes, I am. He was a Pentecostal. And I said, but believe it or not, it's the same God, you know. And we had a wonderful conversation. Obviously, the Holy Spirit, very alive in his life. And uh, I explained to him the meaning of confirmation and the meaning of the Holy Spirit. And we talked a lot about our faith. Eventually, the the inner door of the office opened, and they called my name. It's like winning the lottery, you know? And uh, <laughs> to go in to the examining room. And as I packed up my papers and things, you know, I, I turned to that young man and I just said, you know, I want to thank you, because obviously you are very alive in, in the Holy Spirit, and, and you saw an opportunity to talk about your faith. And you took that opportunity. You know, do we take those moments in our lives? We all know it's been raining a lot in Buffalo. We all know that the lawns are greener than ever. And we all know that the pollen count is going up and our allergies are starting. And how often we talk about those things rather than seizing those moments to really talk about our faith, as did that young man. Are you able to explain why you were confirmed? Are you 
able to explain why you would like to be? Are you able to articulate how the Holy Spirit is alive and working in your life? What is confirmation? Confirmation, of course, is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But what does that really mean? What does that mean? Well, you know, during the last year, I kept going over and over the year of mercy, telling you to put on the lens of mercy. Well, I suppose today I want you to have bifocals. I want you to have the lens of mercy, but I want you to have the lens of the Holy Spirit, too. The lens of mercy along with the lens of the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you see everything in your life through that lens of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alive and well in your life? There are many, many stories I can tell you about where I've seen the Holy Spirit alive. But I'll share one. It was a month ago in this very church. Four o'clock mass on Saturday. The um, ushers came to me after mass and uh, one of the ushers said, there's a young man who would like to talk to you. And I suppose I had every reason to say no because I had the 5.30 Mass too, but I went to talk with him. And he began to tell me that it had been many years, even though he's a young guy, many years since he'd ever gone to Mass. And he said that he was very out of sorts all day and he spent the day driving around in his car, thinking, lifting many of his thoughts to God. And um, he doesn't even live in this county, how much he was driving. And he said it was about quarter to four, and I was driving down Maple Road, and I saw St. Gregory the Great Church. So I thought I would test God, and I told him, well, if there's a mass at four, I'll stay. And he pulled in the driveway. And he walked into the church and he was double crossed. There was a mass at four, so he was stuck. <laughs> and he said to me, everything you said in your homily, your homily was written just for me. I wrote that homily at quarter to four, 15 minutes before mass that day because my own notes didn't make any sense to me. And in the confessional, I left confessions early that day, all of these thoughts were coming to me and I said, I, I need to change what I'm going to say. The power of the Holy Spirit. And I've met with that young man a few times since and you can see the Holy Spirit alive, guiding him. Why do I bring all this up today? Not just because we just had confirmation, but the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, we hear of really the first confirmation, the real first confirmation was the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles, Pentecost. But what do we hear? Philip is over in Samaria preaching and baptizing, and then also healing, and then who comes? The Apostles. To do what? to lay hands because they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. It's the first confirmation in recorded history. And even though the sacrament has changed over the years as to when we receive it and how we prepare for it, it's the same Holy Spirit. And we hear the gift of the Holy Spirit again in the Gospel. And who was here on Monday and Tuesday but the Apostle, Bishop Malone, successor of the Apostle to confer the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today we just reflect on that meaning in our life. If you are confirmed or you're preparing, is confirmation the end of the beginning for you and the opening of a new chapter of life of living your faith? Are you able to see your life in and through the lens of the Holy Spirit?